tools you will need to complete this repair are a flat blade screwdriver. If you have standing water, it's a good idea to remove it with a shop vac first. Today we're working on a Whirlpool dishwasher. No drain issue. Customer found standing water at the end of the cycle. What I've determined was the problem was a seized drain pump. We're going to replace the drain pump, but first we got to remove the standing water. So I've got a shop back for that. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. We've got the bulk of the water out of the dishwasher. We're going to remove the kick plate to access the drain pump. This is done on this particular model with a flathead screwdriver, and you want to give a half turn to each of the retainer clips on the front of the panel, one on each side, and then need to pry the clips out of position. Usually this insulation will come off with the kick plate. This one has come apart from it, so we just peel that out of the way. A good trick to utilize when replacing any part is to take a look at the new part to see exactly what's gonna be expected of you in replacing the part. On this, we can see that it's a twist in place pump that goes clockwise, so to remove it, we have to go counterclockwise. Also has a computer connection with a small tab that locks that connection in place. To remove the pump, get a firm grasp on it and turn counterclockwise. Now, once you have it disengaged from the sump, you want to disconnect your wires by putting a little bit of pressure on that tab and pulling the wire connector out. 
And then on the side of the pump, there is a little catch that holds the wire to the side of the pump. And you just slip it right past. And your pump is removed. Now you will always have a little bit of water that's going to come out when you remove a part like this. So what you wanna do is clean up what's come out, but also you wanna vacuum out the sump through the drain port to make sure that there's nothing in there that might have caused that original pump to go bad. <laughs> With your new drain pump in hand, we'll slide it underneath the drain hose close to the water inlet. Then we will take our power supply wire for the drain pump and we will put it back into its clip on the side and plug it into the new pump like so. and then take the drain pump and we are going to place it so that the top of it is in approximately the 10 o'clock position and get it onto the housing firmly and then twist it clockwise and make sure that it's locked in all the way around and you are done replacing the pump. Now that we have the new drain pump in place, we're gonna test the dishwasher to make sure that it works without leaking and that the drain pump drains the water out. The dishwasher is filling with water and you want to start to observe the underside of the pump to make sure that there's nothing dripping
Okay, at this time we have no leaking. We'll let that continue to fill and run. Typical condition that has uh, occurred in dishwashers that is brought on by ourselves, basically, is the customer will complain that there's grit being left on the dishes by the dishwasher. This occurs when someone pre-washes their dishes in the kitchen sink and then puts them into the dishwasher to sanitize. The sudsing on top of the water is a dead giveaway. Usually, it will be a lot thicker. The cure for the sudsing in the dishwasher is simply two capfuls of vegetable oil. Let the dishwasher run, the suds will dissipate, and then do not pre-wash your dishes in the kitchen sink again. Final leak test on this is you want to put it in to drain manually and observe the underside of the drain pump as it drains. And again, we have no leaks. So we are now ready to reinstall the kick plate with insulation. I've re-adhered the insulation to the kick plate. This part here is cut out where the water inlet valve is, just so that it's out of the way. Now we're going to Tip it in and up. And then slide it back. And you'll line up with a square hole on the frame. And take one of your uh, lock pins and press it in place. pops in place and then you rotate it a half turn to lock the tab in place with a flat head screwdriver Same thing on this side. Get it into the square hole. Half turn. Locks it in place. And that completes our repair.